coming from a medical company, one of the things we always talked about was the medical risk matrix. So, you know, if you think about a two-dimensional chart, on one axis, you've got the degree of autonomy of the system. Okay, is it just giving you information, like here's the temperature 15 seconds ago? Is it giving you recommendations? Or is it actually taking an action based on its, you know, what it's come up with? And then the other axis is, you know, what's the degree of effect? Um, is it, you know, again, just informational? It doesn't change anything. Um, is it something where somebody's going to take that advice and do something? Is it something where it might overdose a patient if, if it gives the wrong answer? So depending on where you fall in a kind of grid like that, it tells you the kind of risk you've got to take into effect. And these days, I'm also thinking about speed. There's a sort of third axis of, you know, if this is wrong, how quickly can I react to, to what it, you know, what's going to happen with this? this is, we see this with talk about autonomous weapons, right? If they make a wrong decision, you don't really have a lot of time to tell it not to do something. Um, I think it's also something that has to come from a management point of view. Management has to actually reward people who spend time doing the ethical thing rather than the people who are only the people who do things as quickly as possible. We don't always see that, but that kind of leadership has to come from the top down. Um, I think, you know, you have to, again, emphasize those core values um, and make sure that your training and people's uh, thought processes really take those into account. I think you also want to do some of the things that we've done traditionally. There's a really good article called The Mirror in the Machine on Medium by Brandon Cosley, where he took generative AI and he gave it resumes and he made minor variations in the inputs to the resumes just to see the different effect that would have on the results that came out of that system. That's something we've been doing for a long time with things like Lyme and Shap analysis. I think it's that kind of thing we also have to do here to see if there are unintended biases that are coming into these systems that uh, we just might not otherwise see. Stephen, how do you feel about that? Uh, what are you seeing in the in the area of ethics? Yeah, so I, I like to to combine ethics and and risk because I think a lot of people translate ethics as if they're following regulations, then they're they're fine, right? But I think there's internal discussions that you need to determine how are you going to use your customer data, and what is your ethic risk tolerance level, right? Because you, you have to balance the speed of innovation with how how likely are you going to go on that scale of being fully ethical or not, right? And there has to be just open discussions around that. I think once you have that discussion, then determine what models actually are fine from an ethical standpoint and, and allow those to go into production, right? Highlight those that are strictly ones that you do not want to put in production, right? And then have a review committee uh, review those ones that are kind of in the gray area. I, I think all too often with data, we don't separate the stuff that is that is totally safe, totally ethical, and put that aside and just give access to people and let them go do what they need to do versus just locking everything down and having these overbearing processes. So ethical risk tolerance internally, understand what that is, evaluate your models, does it meet the ethical requirements or not, educate people around risk tolerance, ethical tolerance versus regulations because they're, they're very different things in my mind. Thank you. Jitender, how about you? So as many of us understand, AI development uh, requires a layered approach. You need a platform, then you need an application, and then you need users. And uh, underneath the platform, you need data sources. So when our customers come to us and say they're building a risk model, they're building a fraud model, they're building a credit model, and they would love to leverage uh, artificial intelligence to improve uh, the accuracy and effectiveness of these models, we suggest them that, have you thought about guardrails? What kind of guardrails would you put so that not only you get effectiveness out of your system, but you reduce biases and, and make sure that the system is uh, extremely ethical. And define what ethics means to you. Ethics means very different things to different, as, as uh, other panelists mentioned. In case of healthcare, it means something different. In, in finance, it means something different. So just understand the guardrails you wanna put in, in places. And I, I, we have recommended that put guardrails in layers. Like when it comes to data platform, put guardrails so that uh, you need uh, extreme diversity in the sources you will bring in to train your models. When you think about applications, uh, same set of guardrails are required that you have some checks and balances in place to assess the uh, the accuracy and, and biases that may be present in the decisions applications are announcing. Um, and then I think well, in our case, what we recommend is that make sure that you're continuously assessing the system. Every layer of the system needs to be assessed separately. Uh, the data sources, uh, the decisions that the system's making, the users that are using it. Again, make sure that you have a very diverse set of uh, users 
and you don't you don't always have can set of scripts because when these models go into real world, you do not know how they will be tested and played with. So just have as much diversity in across all layers in your AI stack that will help you put one very extreme um, set of guardrails across all layers in the system. I like that term. Gaurav, are you seeing in your area the same use of the guardrails that Jatender's talking about? Is that something that is that resonates with you? Absolutely. Guardrails are required to align these powerful systems to human preferences. And I think uh, what gets measured gets managed. Uh, and, and in terms of ethics, I think we should look at it that way. Uh, starting with what are the key use cases for which these models that we are creating can be used and what kind of biases that can come in uh, because, uh, you know, within those use cases. And it starts with uh, looking at the data and making sure that that data is diverse enough, does not contain those biases and and, uh, and making sure that uh, doing everything uh, within the data so that before it even reaches the AI model, uh, these things are removed and corrected. But uh, because of, uh, you know, because we are all humans, uh, these biases get, uh, you know, can creep in within the data without us knowing uh, as well. And I think that's where uh, we need to keep testing these AI models for, for those things automatically, continuously, as new changes happen to training data, as new changes happen to AI models. Uh, uh, you need to keep measuring it and then correcting it by uh, those guardrails, by providing uh, the the human alignment uh, data sets uh, to it as well. Matt, I'll give you the last word on this. Yeah, I agree with what's been said here. I'll use a little data to back it up, which is uh, Deloitte did a study last year on the state of ethics and trust in technology. And when asked about AI and the concerns around AI, it was privacy and ethics. That was the number one by far. They also ask a question around what to do to combat this. And they said, if senior leadership buys into the ethical standards and promote those within an organization, over 90% adoption within an organization. And I truly believe that. It starts at the top of what are the ethical standards that an organization has and the privacy standards. And if those are promoted by executive level people, you know, the executives aren't the ones writing the code on the day to day, but they're the ones that need to push down what is our stance, what is our beliefs, what are our values on these things within an organization, right? And I really think it's around, you, we have to do this because we have to move fast and innovate, but not at the, in my opinion, not at the expense of customers and their data and their privacy around this. So I think data privacy is a huge one. And I also think the AI bias is real and that's a big problem too, right? So how do you, how do you fight that within the data? And that's hard. And to me, you fight that by hiring a very diverse team that works on these things, right? We can't have the same type of people that are working on these. How do we um, hire a diverse team and diverse have a diverse candidate pool that is working on these AI initiatives that can hopefully help fight some of the bias that we are seeing uh, in these models and in the data that's going into these models? <laughs>